Hello, Cade Me in the Fall Chair Ash. Uh, welcome back to Clancy's Kitchen, the podcast. Uh, it's an exciting day for us because we have our first ever guest into Clancy's Kitchen, the podcast today. And it's my brother, Fimber Clancy of the High Kings. Yeah. You're very welcome, Fimber. We're delighted to have you. Well, it's great to be here in so, Clancy's Kitchen. Like everyone else at the moment, you're pretty much grounded. Gigs and everything have come to a halt during this crisis. Things came to a halt very quickly. We were in America on a two-month tour. We had 40 shows booked. We had performed 20 of them. And overnight, everything just stopped and we were home. Before St. Patrick's Day, we were home on the 16th of March. And it's pretty much all quiet in the Western Front since then. So where were you? What city were you in when you had to come back? We were in uh, Alexandria, Virginia, in a, a place called the Birchmere. We had two sold-out nights. And uh, about 50%, even though the two shows were a total sellout, um, about 50%, 40, 50% of the people turned up, Gosh, you yeah. know, which was yeah. disappointing. But yeah. what can you do during yeah. a world pandemic? Yeah. So how has the whole experience of being on lockdown been for you? I know you're, you're busy because you're, you're building a house and yeah. you're not physically building the house no, yourself. No. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us are doing no. a bit of gardening. Well, Fimber's I, building I would, a house. <laughs> during I, the I'd process. never live in a house I built myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been pretty surreal. I mean, with everybody. I mean, everyone's sort of just, it, this, is, this is new territory for everyone um, to go from being so busy. Uh, you know, at the beginning, of course, it was nice rest point. And it was like, oh, this, yeah, this is mm -hmm. fine. You can get used to this. But after a while, it gets... Mm -hmm. very tiring and then it's okay what do we need to do next yeah. you know to get this whole thing rolling again yeah. and unfortunately when it's outside of your you know it's outside of your control there's very yeah. little you can do yeah is know? that difficult i mean considering you're so used to being on the road and going 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 and then to kind of stop yes it is stock. it is and, and you just stop you, you go completely you stop at first and then you start thinking okay well what can you do and you start you know it gives you an opportunity i suppose to start working on original material yeah. Yeah. writing songs, um, doing a lot of listening to other music and and, uh, and figuring stuff out in the guitar, really, you know, and giving have yourself... You, have you written any songs, do you I remember? have actually written a couple of songs oh, since, yeah. yeah. They're not ready to be oh, unboxed. No, no, no. no, no. I, have, no I, have, I, have, I, have, I don't have the words with me, I can't remember. Would say, go but, yeah. out of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, we'll have to have a listen to that. Yeah, well, or when the house is built, we'll, when be, the house there is for, built, we'll be there for the housewarming and we'll hear the song. I'll perform them on the, on the housewarming, yeah. Have some. Into your kitchen, by yeah. Into the kitchen, yeah. We'll call it Finn by Clancy's kitchen. Yeah. Do another podcast from there. Yeah. Um. So... You came to see our show, right? I did. In Kilkenny, Ken I did. Kitchen, I did. It was fantastic. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Good. I was hoping it was a great you'd night. See that. Oh no, I did. I did. Feel free to say it was, more. Oh look, <laughs> it was. It was. Motions it was really, really good. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> for, I came up oh, and yeah, I sang did. with you. But I mean, look, it was just absolutely. It was. It was. It was a joy. I really, really enjoyed it. And it was just. It was a real intimate setting. The songs were great. The, the crack was great. Yeah. You know, it was very natural. Yeah. So you get the kind of concept of this well, Absolutely, I think, yeah. because I mean, yeah. you grew up in Clancy's Kitchen it is. as well. It is. And we were pretty much surrounded by music and singing all yeah. the time. I remember uh, Daddy would always have his five string banjo. He'd be rehearsing in the bedroom. Absolutely, Do you yeah. That? That's and what... you remember he had a studio. He kind of had this makeshift studio upstairs. He did. He had a four track. I think track, at one yeah. point, did he have like egg cartons or something on, on the wall to did, like, yeah. dampen the sound and he everything? He had egg cartons. Um, <laughs> sell a tape or something. I don't know how, how he attached them onto the wall, but he it was tiny, wasn't it? It was a small it? little, yeah. It was, it was yeah, a, a high stool. The garret. It was a high stool they there. They called it the garret. They called it the garret. That's yeah. right. And uh, it was it was a, a four track Tascam cassette tape. Anyone remember the cassette tapes? It was a cassette tape, so you'd record two tracks, then you'd bounce. Or you'd throw, I can't even remember how you did now, but it was great fun. It was oh, great actually, experiment. I didn't realise he went that far, that he did some recording and oh, stuff. Oh, he did. Well. I just, that was just a little rehearsal Yeah, space. sure. I mean, he, you know, he messed around and I messed around myself and my cousin Collie. Yeah. Colin Power went in and uh, we recorded our, our early songs and just yeah. experimented. You, were, you started off on flute, didn't you? I did. I, I, I did start off on flute. Young, yeah. It was. There was. It was. Uh, my first instrument actually was the banjo. You're saying about dad used to yeah. uh, disappear after dinner, and you'd hear the the banjo, plick yeah. plucking away yeah. upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember turning around to mum saying, "Oh, you know what's he what's he doing?" She said, "He's just practicing. He's just playing up there every night, and he just loved playing." Yeah. And uh, I was very curious, and she said, "Why don't you stick your head in the door and see what's going on?" So I sat. I just stuck my mirror opening the door and peeping in the door and he said, come in, come in, sit down. Yeah, I said, what are you, what are you doing? And that was it then. Next thing, before I knew it, he, he had the small banjo, gave it over to me. I checked the license plate and it's, it's, um, it's a Vega, uh, 
a figa banjo and I checked the serial number it's 1926 wow. it was, it was made still, yeah. you still have that one I still have it yeah. and, and the original case as well the original wow. case that it came with as well yeah. Um, but it's it's lovely. It's something I'd never I'd never yeah, get rid of. I remember Daddy trying to get me to play the banjo, and of course I wouldn't. I remember yeah. saying, "Daddy, girls, don't play the banjo." And I'm so sorry now. How cool yeah. would it be to play the banjo? Yeah. I'd love to be able to play the banjo. The it's the coolest. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It really is. Evan concurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Although <laughs> Billy Connolly wouldn't agree, didn't he say, "No one ever gets off with a banjo player." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always the lead. And no one, the no lead one about it. <laughs> One of my lasting memories is because before your um, your father died, Fimba was we had a video and we've lost it and I've looked everywhere, mm-hmm. and it was a morning in William Street when Lori, our eldest now, was nineteen. Right. What was she? Just coming up to two years old. Oh yeah. And she's walking into the bedroom and your father's in the dressing room playing the banjo. Yeah. And the look on her face and it's in <laughs> our video yeah. and she's just looking up adoringly at the uh, Bobby and yeah. the music. She was totally fascinated. Yeah. yeah. And I'm still trying to find that. Oh, that would be yeah. great to, to find that. Yeah. I'm just thinking now. Uh, there was a, a video clip of yourself. You mentioned Kali there. Uh, I think it was the Late Late Show or Oh Hibas, yes. Come yes. On to those? And uh, she's colleague Life, was really colleague. Lifelines. Life oh, lifelines. That, was, that, was, that was the one. That was a challenge. And our cousin Colly, who's actually Peg, who's the last living That's right. member of, of the Clancy's, actually left. Peg is the last one and she's 90. She's 90 years yeah. old. Yeah. God bless Peg. her. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to try and find that clip, I think. Oh, definitely. <laughs> oh, it's still, it's, yeah. oh, it's, it's on YouTube. Yeah. It is on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I saw there. It. We'll I saw find it. that yeah. and we'll look it up. But you were you the locks of hair. I did, yeah. away with your... Colly, the, he's, and Collie was cool out with like a leather jacket. Oh yeah, jacket. the leather jacket, yeah. And then, then he Alpha, what were you called? Alpha, Alpha Love Shot. <laughs> <laughs> Alpha Love Shot, what a name. Alpha Love Shot. And we How were did trying you come to, up with that one? Well, Collie came up with the <laughs> <laughs> suggestion. He says, why don't we just eat? Like there's three of us in the band at the time. And he said, right, each of us think of a word. Right. And we'll just stick it together. So someone said, Alpha, probably me. I can't remember who said it. And then the next person said love, and someone said shot. <laughs> but it was all like right, written down, one words, and then thrown, crumpled up on a piece of paper and putting it in, and everyone taking it out and see if they worked. So who else? And that was, was in, actually the who, best who? of them. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Alpha love shot. But Can I you remember, remember any of the others? Oh, and, uh, one was um, Harry's bald head, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, uh, the frogs from Spock was another one. <laughs> <laughs> and then you pulled uh, me out of school. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, oh, there was one other one. Piranha, big, was big, big, big goose pakoda. Was the <laughs> other one? Big goose, big goose pakoda. But Alpha Love Shot. But Alpha Shot stuff. The and then we met uh, Evan. Uh, he was in short trousers at the time. <laughs> Still am. Um, You're probably no only thirteen or fourteen. I don't know how old you are. You remember how old you? Alpha Love Shot. It was about 13 or 14. Yeah. 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 Evan, was that the Alpha Love Shot? No, that was the Piranha Brothers. The Piranha Brothers, Brothers. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Piranha Brothers, we, we got We made that. a big down in Cork, didn't we? That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we played a great gig in the Crazy Horse, remember that? Yeah, yeah. At the end of that, at the end of the... I remember you going into, into your house and me and your dad, and your dad was like, not another one of these musicians coming <laughs> yeah, in here. And that gig then, I remember him coming yeah. up and he was saying, like, that was just yeah. amazing. Like, it was... It was a big it, memory of mine now, yeah. Mm. It was a it was a pinnacle gig. It was the end. Uh, Collie had done um, a music management and sound course in Colossus Stefan in Cork City, and it was I think it was a two was it a two year course. He did the second year. He did the yeah. second year. We and, all and he said, okay, we had this <laughs> with this brainwave that we'll all sign up to do this because we found out there was free recording. So okay. we said we'll go in after on. after class mm-hmm. and and record an album. <laughs> And we never, we actually, we did record something, but it, it was, uh, it was a, it was a second year project and we recorded, um, we recorded a song. What was the song? <laughs> I can't remember. Come on now, Evan. Oh my God. Something to do with piranhas, was it? No, it no, wasn't no, really no. piranhas. Uh, I can sing it for you, but I can't go on, remember yeah, go the name. On. Go on, sing a bit of it there. Hey. Uh, what was the name of it? <laughs> no, How's I, it go? Give me a guitar. Do, 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 <laughs> do, do, do. Yeah, you were playing flute. Oh, was this? Was one. Yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. That's the one. <laughs> what was the name of it? Stranger. 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 That was it, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we recorded that song anyway, and at the end of that year, there was a big sort of performance, wasn't there? Yeah. And we got to do a number of tunes in The Crazy Horse, and it was fantastic. All the parents of everyone was in there. Yeah. 
And it was just one of those magical nights, you know. It was just mm. a really great memory for us all. Mm. You good know. fun times. And it was great fun. Yeah. And we were on last. Okay. And uh, and everyone was had a few libations. Libations? <laughs> it's a fancy word drink. for drink. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was just, it was great. A great atmosphere and it was just mm. one of those magical nights, yeah. So, so it was... It was always going to be music for you. There was Pretty never, much, there was yeah. never any question. No, no way, sounds and butts. I saw, I saw you two performing their "Love Comes to Town" tour in Dublin in 1989, and I thought, "That's." Mm. What I, I remember all the wanted to do. Like, electrician. That was a that was a backup. That was a backup, <laughs> plan. backup yeah. plan. My mother said it's it's all lovely and grand. Like my father was there saying, "Oh, I want to play music." I said, like, "Great, play music." My mother's like, "Okay, well, listen, you know, something why don't you have something on. to fall back on?" Mm -hmm. So uh, I yeah, yeah right. worked as a as an electrician, uh, an apprentice electrician, and did all of that for a while. But I remember I just had started the electrical apprenticeship, and I went to see you two, and uh, it was actually Donald's brother Eben got us tickets because he was working in Windmill Lane at the time. Oh, he was and in he got sound, us, was he? He was in sound. Yeah. He was in Windmill Lane in, uh, doing sound. And uh, he got us tickets to go see you two, two nights in a row, mind you, uh, with B.B. King. And I loved the oh, Dones as that well. Was, that was, the, was that the Joshua Tree? No, that was Love Comes to Town. Tour. Oh, Love Comes to yeah. Town. Oh, and I, I, after that night, I remember getting up. I had to get up the, the following Monday morning to go off and do my apprenticeship and I was thinking oh, oh I just want to be in you too I want to be a rock star I just want to be I'd love to I'd think in Larry Mullen I love the drums and I thought I'd just love to be Larry Mullen Jr yeah. in that band and just playing the drums oh, and yeah, doing that used to be big into the drums I used to love the drums yeah mm. when we used to get all the bread the big plastic bread containers I used line yeah, yeah. them up and get it just what do you know what I used to I used that. I used to, I, used to <laughs> I wanted a set of drums and we we're living in William Street and was neighbors and we had up side in that little studio. It's coming back to me yeah. now. And the cat and used wanted, to sleep in yeah. the. And I wanted. <laughs> she used to sleep in the drum, like. Yeah. Fimber, well, go up there. <laughs> the living day, I, like, I, I so wish the cat thing. very abruptly. No, <laughs> but there was. Um, I wanted to play the drums and I said, oh, can I get a drum kit to dad? And he was like, are you joking? He says, our neighbors will kill us. You can't have drums. Yeah. And we all know the houses, town. you know. Yeah. I mean, your next door neighbors, I mean, you can't, you know, you just can't. So he says, I'll get you drumsticks though. So I just play on the <laughs> I just play on the furniture. I just play on the on the on the, the chairs and the anything I could play, I play. And I remember playing, remember the top of the pops said, <laughs> It was a, a thin lazy thing, I was being belting away at the time, yeah. And sometimes the cat. <laughs> and sometimes the cat, yeah, waking the cat. Would be the abruptly. symbol. Yeah, yeah, the cat would be the symbol. Yeah. <laughs> so what was the transition from that then into playing with uh, Daddy and the brothers, how, how did that come about? Well, I suppose um, even even before we had the the, the Piranha Brothers, it was... Uh, alpha Love Shot. Uh, alpha Love Shot. Even that was really kind of into a kind of um, folk rock, you know, sort of Neil Young, Bob Dylan, acoustic-based uh, songs. And so I, I really kind of liked the sound of that anyway. And then kind of went off more in kind of rocky direction. And then had an opportunity out of the blue, really. But your father um, used to be bringing you out to Wine Gap. Oh yeah, I never, yeah, I never, time, I never stopped. Uh, I never stopped playing the yeah. the guitar and banjo with Dad because that, every that, that was a good training, though. I mean, even before you were of age, I remember him taking yeah. myself and Aoife out, you know, as, as teenagers yeah. into these country pubs, Tallahocht and Delaney's, yeah. you know, Slate Quarries, Mahine. Yeah. Well, he thought it was places. very important, didn't he, to take expose you to all that? Well, thing. it was, and at the time, you know, as a teenager, you're thinking, oh, I don't want to be singing these kind of. Uh, maudlin Irish songs type of thing but when you, you were kind of put on the spot and you had to do something yeah. you know and, he never, and it was a good training because you had a very appreciative audience absolutely it is you know they were behind you and they loved and then yeah. when it became you know oh you do the, do that one with the harmonies and you get, you get more confident then, yeah. but you get confidence then as, as it went on but also you know? they were great crack I remember when I came over in 1996 and yeah. we used to go out with your father yourself Carly and yeah. I and we go to these places for Heen and Wine Oh, and yeah. Rest. God, they were amazing nights. He'd yeah. love it. I mean, he he absolutely, he loved people. He loved people. He loved meeting people. He loved singing songs. He loved going out to the same place. I mean, every week, every week he'd go mm -hmm. to different pubs, but they probably, um, Tallahawk was one of the big haunts in the early days and a wine gap then, Guinan's in, in wine gap and, and pubs all over county 
uh, Tipperary County Water and County Kilkenny. He'd go to all the country pubs. Yeah, and it's hard for people now to imagine that, that haven't experienced it. But that was really, I mean, pubs back then, and it wasn't about you weren't paid to no, sing. No, no, no. It's Absolutely. not like now where you're paid to go in as musicians no. and singers. It was purely for the pleasure. love and yeah. the pleasure of it. And with Daddy, I think it wasn't even a case of uh, how talented are you? How good, you know, you'd appreciate, of course, yeah. you know, talent, talented musicians yeah. and singers. But if you had this burning desire to perform something and there was a passion behind it and it was something you really wanted to do. Yeah. Everyone you know, was invited great time to for that. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it was no fantastic for people because sometimes in these places you'd get really quite kind of shy, retiring, maybe farm or some of them. But, you know, you once they had that opportunity yeah. to, like, they of might course. love this poem or a story they tell and it gave them that platform without any pressure, really, to do that, you know? Absolutely. And I mean, he, that. I remember the, one of the funny stories. Um, he went out to one of the country pubs and, and everyone had their party piece, but he said, why don't we do something different? And next week, everyone do a completely different song, a brand new song. And we'll all, and he, this went on for a few weeks. And of course, in the middle of this, of course, he'd been off. This must have been about 93 or 94, whenever the Bob Dylan concert was in Madison Square Garden. That was 92, actually. Oh, was it 92? Yeah. No, you were at that? We were at it, yeah. God, that must have been some experience. I missed it. But when he came back from that, he was sharing a dressing room with Stevie Wonder and uh, Ronnie, Ronnie Wood, Wood from the Rolling Stones, right, at this... At this um, was it, uh, it was a 30, 30 year anniversary uh, yeah. of Bob, Bob Dylan, Dylan with Columbia yeah. Records in Madison Square Garden. And, and he'd asked them to sing. He wanted them to sing uh, Hour That the Ship Comes In. Yeah, the song that was it, requested yeah. requested them to sing. And when Dad came back from that, of course, himself and Ronnie Wood uh, became fast friends. <laughs> and I was, I was there and uh, a Friday night, he was about to head out the door, next and the phone rang. I answered the phone. Hello, is Bobby there? And I was like, who's this Hello. fella now? And uh, I could hear the converse, as the conversation unfolded, I, I stuck my ear and said, this is, who's this fella now? Out of curiosity. And I could hear my father, uh, Ronnie was saying to him, uh, I'm having a bit of a party in Kildare, a bit of a knees up, Bobby, I'd love you to come along. <laughs> he said, you know, a couple of the boys were over there making all this. <laughs> and uh, my father said to him, I'd love to come, Ronnie, I really would, but there's a great session out in Delaney's Estate Quarries tonight. Yeah. And I couldn't possibly miss <laughs> it. I all think the it was lads an old-timer's birthday. An old, I, I yeah, told yeah. him I'd go out and sing a song. Yeah. I wouldn't like to let him down, exactly. you know what I mean. And it was so yeah. funny. No, like, fame meant nothing to nah, him. It really didn't. It really he didn't. was as comfortable... Because I was there that night and here he was in the dressing room kind of holding court with all these greats of rock yeah. and roll music, yeah. you know, and God, they were all there that night. Yeah. Johnny Cash, the lot of them. Uh, the funny uh, thing as well is... He was as comfortable with that as he would be at a session. Oh, he would, yeah. It was the, he'd, he'd be talking the same as if you were sitting down beside him at a session or if he was talking to Bob Dylan or Neil Young or any of them. He would talk to them the same way and just people were people. But if we were out some night and it was kind of quiet, uh, he'd... Um, He'd, he'd make up a story. He'd say, oh, do you know, today is Finbar's birthday, he'd say. <laughs> and, I was there, and it wouldn't be my birthday at all, but it's just to create an occasion. Yeah. Yeah. And it was normally just before closing time, of course. <laughs> he he would do this thing happy right birthday. before. Yeah, happy <laughs> birthday. I went to say, he'd say, say, last call, and pulling the point like that, and he goes, cheers, Finbar's birthday today, lads, just to say happy birthday. Oh, no, happy birthday, happy birthday. <laughs> and next thing, he'd lean over, and he'd take the car keys and very sneakily slip them and talk at the side of his mouth, and he'd go... Go out and he's called the banjo and the guitar, the machines. That's what, uh, yeah, Raylan said them, this last week. Go out and get the machines, he'd yeah. say. <laughs> I, you know, as, and then I'd bring him in. But the thing is, I'd walk in the door with him and he'd always look surprised. He'd go, oh, you're an awful <laughs> man. I should know. <laughs> I suppose now that you have, we might as well have an old song, you know. We'll, we'll, we'll be ashamed take him, now you know. to bring them back out. Be ashamed out. to bring them back out again. <laughs> yeah, great tactics. Yeah, great tactics. How yeah, to yeah. change a room, how yeah, to yeah. manipulate an evening. And at the end of it, everyone yeah. would be delighted. Yeah. And, yeah. and it would. And then what would happen is, you know, well, you can say it yeah. now because it's years later, we'd be locked into the pub and phone calls would be made and people would be not tapping yeah. on the window. Yeah. We'd be there to, it's oh. funny how uh, similar yeah. they were, like the brothers, yeah. and how different in a way. Like, I remember one night. My father came away with us over to Ardmore. We were going over myself and Dunnock and if you were going for a session. He said, I'll go with you now. And we would have taken our cues before from the outfitters and we'd go in and check out a place. Oh, and yeah. Maybe have a drink and ask permission to bring in the instruments and play. Suss it out a bit. And yeah. we, we were going along the car anyway. Next thing, my father takes the concertina out in the car. And he's playing away and the lads are kind of looking at each other like, what's going on here? Yeah. And we arrived over to Riley's over in Ardmore. We pulled up. And my father goes, right, lads, get the instruments out. We'll be playing going in the door. 
<laughs> because he knew if one person in the village got a glimpse of us going in playing, They'd all. They, the word would spread yeah. and there'd be the place would be packed and yeah. we'd have a great night. We'd have yeah. a brilliant. Yeah. 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 And again, it was purely for pleasure, for the love yeah. Of, yeah, yeah. of the crack and playing the music. But there was a, a sense of ceremony and occasion. Yeah. Mm. Do you know when you go out sometimes over the years, oh, has nothing happen, happening tonight? Yeah. But if you were with Bobby or Liam, uh, th these types of great lads in life characters, something's going to happen. Yeah, of course. And you'd always feel that electricity in yeah. the air. Something's going to happen. Anything tonight. could happen. Anything could happen. <laughs> yeah. That was fantastic. Reland, really, yeah. you were at one of the last ever sessions, weren't you? Do you remember the, out in up the, the Cumber Mountains? Yeah. With Daddy. Well, Tell us about that. We'll maybe have a song after this, then. Yeah. But um, just a few weeks probably a month, I'd say, before your father died. Um, do you remember he had sort of a kind of reprieve? Like yeah. he had a couple of weeks where his health, his breathing came back right. and he was amazing. And of course, we I were down here day. in Ring and he said, uh, one night he said, come on, we'll go out for a session. Yeah. I was delighted. I went to this place called O'Brien's in Mill Street which is sort of northeast from here to south. You side. couldn't find it if you went looking for it. it I turned it's the in the corner. middle of the Cumra Mountains. Do you know the place? There's I a couple do, of yeah. old ponds well, outside not. the door. It's actually yeah. towards it? the northeast from here. All oh, right. You right. go out to, well, in actual fact, it is. You are on the uh, Master McGrath Road there. You turn left, and it's a place called Mill Street. And you turn this sweeping corner, and you could swear you were going back to the 1930s or something. And this old place, and it was a pub and a shop. And the two old petrol pumps, petrol pumps yeah. like two old fellas outside yeah. with the numbers stuck oh, from yeah. 1960 something, yeah. you know, just I went in. And all I can remember was this old fella just peeping over the, the counter as if he was counting many or something. He hadn't looked up for years. He saw Bobby <laughs> and his face lit up, you know. And then this man came in in an old tweed suit and a trilby, you know. Yeah quintessentially on one side, <laughs> and the biggest bulbous pitted nose, purple nose I'd ever seen in my life. And he just looked at Bobby and said, geez, is that Bobby Clancy? He said, <laughs> I'd say I haven't seen you here for a solid 30 years. <laughs> and then they started talking about the night 30 years ago, as if it was yesterday. And at the time, I was about 28 or something. So the memories of <laughs> and the recall of songs and stories from that, night 30 years ago right. is older than myself right. and anyway anyway by about midnight you know the place was heaving and we were there till five in the morning came home and i woke roshi and i said i've had one of the best nights of my life and yeah. it still remains that mm -hmm. way but anyway maybe we should sing one of these songs Phil. i think we should um yeah. i had the opportunity to um perform with the lads because um my dad had a quadruple bypass operation in September of 1995 and the Clancy brothers were going on tour in October and I was asked to step in uh, playing the banjo instead of them so I think it would be nice to sing a song one of the songs we start off the show with uh, I grab my machine here <laughs> <laughs> the machine. and of course it's a it's a great uh, well-known one of the best known Clancy brother songs uh, Brendan and the Moor Ready, here we go. One, One two, two, three, four. It's of a brave and highwayman, the story we will tell. His name was Willie Brennan, and in Ireland he did well. But on the Kilwork Mountains, so he missed his wild career. And many well he know a man before him shook with fear, and his friend on the moor. Now Brennan's wife had gone to town, provisions for to buy. And when she saw her willy, she commenced to weep and cry. He said, hand to me that tenpenny, as soon as willy spoke. She handed him a blunder bus from underneath her cloak. For young Brennan on the moor, Brennan on the moor, poor brave and undaunted was 
young Brennan on the ball. Hi everyone. If you're listening to Clancy's Kitchen on various platforms or watching it on our YouTube channel, please press like and subscribe and feel free to leave a comment where you can. You can also contact us and get more information at www.clancyskitchen.com. Thank you.